six miles to Chicago. We got a full tank of gas, half a pack of cigarettes. It's dark, and we're wearing sunglasses. Hit it. Good evening, everybody. Mark Klein hanging out with you. Welcome to another Long Island Blues Warehouse at liblues.com. Every week, as most of you know, at this point in time, we like to bring you a new band here in the studio at the world-famous EKO Studios, Deer Park, New York. So we appreciate you checking us out, doing, seeing what we do week after week. This week's featured artist, we have New York City singer-songwriter Kirsten Fien. How are you, Kirsten? I'm great. How are you, Mark? It's good to see you. Thanks. You good too. Good to see you. New good Facebook. Long Island. New Facebook friend of mine. That's right. And the and of Ralph too. And of Ralph as well. <laughs> and that beautiful marketing tool, Facebook, put us together. That's right. And I'm so glad that it did. So, we uh, we we give uh, we give uh, credit and kudos to where I see fit, and uh, I thank Facebook in- incredibly for bringing you to us tonight. So, that having been said, do you, do you have anything to add? No, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> well, enough said on that. I say we let the music speak for itself. And uh, let's get into our first tune. Sounds we'll come great. back and chat with you and some of these fine musicians. What are we doing first? We're going to do a song called Love That's Made to Share. Well, we are going to introduce Long Island and all of the world to you immediately. So if you would, please say hello and welcome this week's featured artist, Kirsten Thien. <laughs> What if I came to stay with a whole lot of love and What if I came to play till you're falling down What if I made you feel your heart be pumping Like an earthquake breaking loose from underground What if you took the chance and I said yes What if it led to a ring and two I do What if I made you do what you feel compelled to Offer up your hand for just one dance Well, you can feel the heat And your mama can't save you now You know the love is complete Put it out on your sleeve Don't keep it to yourself Just give it to me You've got to love, love That's made to share Chance and I said yes. What if it led to a ring and two I do's? What if it all ends up a big old mess? Well, I know I'll still be glad that I loved you. Yeah. 
This week's featured artist, Kirsten Theme. Kirsten! Yes, that's hello. What, that's what we call coming out of the gate strong, I want to begin by saying. Thank you. If that's a preview of what's to come this hour, <laughs> Lord have mercy. Just a little foreshadowing, very, that's very, all. Very excited about it, very excited about it. Another group of high caliber players on the stage with us tonight, and I'm very happy to, again, welcome you aboard to the program. Let's start with some history, if we can, Kirsten. I have a lot of young musician up-and-comers that check the show out week after week, late teens, early 20s, and some of the common questions I get asked are, uh, how did musicians that do the show week after week, how do they get started in music? Let's talk about your history. Were you, were you a, a little girl when you began musically? I was, yes. How old were you? Um, my first public performance was in second grade, singing a Linda Ronstadt song. Called? Uh, actually, it was her version of a Neil Young song okay. called Love is a Rose. And you performed that tune? I did. In I didn't play guitar. My dad played guitar. Your dad plays? Yep, yep. My dad played guitar, and uh, I sang that song. I was supposed to do another song, but the crowd started clapping. I was like, okay, that's good for me, and I was out of there. <laughs> it's safe to assume dad was uh, an influence for you to get started as a musician growing up? Absolutely, yeah. Okay, okay. Yeah. Um, what kind of music were you listening to other than Linda Ronstadt as a, as a child? Um, what was playing in the house when you were well, little growing yeah, up? Well, yeah, at the time, it's what my parents were listening to, uh, Allman Brothers, Eric Clapton, a little bit of Little Feet, uh, Heart, Linda Ronstadt, cool. and the list goes on. You grew to appreciate those artists early. I did, yeah. Um, well, there's always the struggle between parent and child, but that's uh, well, I grew to appreciate those artists later. <laughs> You're not the first uh, <laughs> artist to tell that story. You probably won't be the last, yeah. but I can understand that. Let's talk about... Um, when you started with the guitar, you sang in the second grade. Were you I playing? Did. You were playing guitar back then as well. No, I wasn't. Uh, I picked up the guitar about uh, seven years ago to start writing with, and um, so in the fifth grade. Yeah, <laughs> exactly, <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Um, just started using it as a writing tool, and then as time wore on, um, I wanted to get out and be playing on my own as well as with the band, but also to be able to communicate with my musicians better and, and just be a, a more integral part of the band. I started really playing guitar about seven years ago, and I, I'm loving it now. You're seven years young on the guitar. That's right. That's it. <laughs> and how old were you? Well, forget about your age. Let's talk about how many years after you began seven years ago playing the guitar in front of the public. Um, it took a couple years. I mean, I, I would do some underground appearances where I didn't think anyone would be there, and then I'd <laughs> mess it up terribly and, and just get back on the horse and try again. Invite a few of those fifth graders to come do a gig. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> uh, but started playing with the band a lot, and, and, uh, and now David and I do duo shows, and, and so it's really fun to just be able to, to pick up your instrument and go anywhere and play anywhere. Big time, yeah. big time. I know you do a few uh, uh, solo acoustic things. Mm -hmm. uh, you do the big electric thing with the band you have on here tonight. How mm -hmm. long have you been working with these three guys behind you? These guys. These guys and I have clocked. Uh, sounds I think like, the, sounds the like it's going to be a bad story. <laughs> no, no, no. It's a great story. Um, I think the car the car has logged about 88,000 miles now <laughs> together. So I've, I like to put it in miles. But it's, it's f uh, five plus years. I think this is our sixth year touring together. So it's been a long time, and, and we love it. We still have a great time going out and playing together. Sounds like a good title for road. a song. Yeah, it's been a long time. No, 88,000 miles. <laughs> 88,000 oh, miles yeah. together. Or a lyric for an original tune, something. Yeah. Food for thought. Yeah. yeah. Food for thought. I say we put you people back to work, Kirsten. Let's, Let's do Let's get in another one. We'll chat more with you and Let's some of these it. other fine players. What are, we, uh, what are we doing next? This one's called Nobody's Ever Loved Me Like You Do. For 88,000 miles. <laughs> You good to go? Yeah. Once again on the Long Island Blues Warehouse, we are going to keep it moving with this week's featured artist, Kirsten Thiem.
Abby Carberry from West Babylon, New York, and you're listening to the Long Island Blues Warehouse. I could take you, you know I would, but I've been drinking, so I hand you the keys, my mama taught me to always say please, please drive. Oh yeah, 
This week's featured artist, Kirsten Thien. The third song off the brand new CD entitled Delicious, Please Drive. On the studio version of what you just did, Mr. Hubert Sumlin was a part of. That is correct. How did you make that happen? What an honor. How'd that get put, get put together? Um, well, long, long story short, um, my producer had worked with Hubert a couple times. Uh, he's also a bass player and had played on a couple gigs with Hubert. And as you can hear in that last number, it's heavily influenced by the Chicago blues sound. Big time. Yeah. So I've been listening to a lot of Muddy Waters. And um, and that song was going to go on the record. And, and he had done a gig with Hubert and said, wow, wouldn't it be great if Hubert played on that track? I said, oh, sure, that'd be great. <laughs> but flash forward six months and a lot of phone calls and... And a lot of begging and pleading. And, <laughs> <laughs> and he came on down to the studio. He didn't know me, but he knew a lot of the other guys who were going to be on the session. And uh, we hit it off right away. We, we hit that song. And I think on the record, it's, I think it's like the second take of the song. First, first time through just to say this is what it's about. And the second time through to record it. Really? Yeah, it was really We magic. play that song off this CD, which I want to get right now if Ralph can, uh, can get a little clip on that. The brand new delicious CD, Kirsten Thien, and the uh, the third song, as I mentioned, uh, the one we just uh, the one you just performed with Hubert on this. So phenomenal job, Thanks. kiddo! Phenomenal job. Thanks. Where can people go to get this uh, this disc? By the way, well, uh, of course it's on iTunes and all the digital outlets. Uh, it's available on my website at kirstenthien.com. Now the people are grabbing a pen. <laughs> I'll ask you to spell that out for everybody. Okay, it's uh, K I R. S T E N T H I E N. Very cool. Can you tell I've talked talk to some telemarketers who couldn't spell it? <laughs> <laughs> I, what I can tell is that you enunciate beautifully. Oh, thank you. <laughs> and, and, and that always helps. You'd be amazed at some of the artists we get in here that like have marbles in their mouth when they want to speak. And yep. It's like a pain. In the, it's a real pain in the ass to get them to <laughs> enunciate the way you do. So maybe you were I'll a tele. Help, or were you help. a telemarketer? Uh, I actually did a very short stint <laughs> when I was in D.C., but it wasn't really telemarketing. It was uh, fundraising for the Kennedy Center. All right. so very cool. Very cool. <laughs> it still was no fun. I, I hate picking up the phone and asking people to give me money. Well, it's either the it's the force. Either you're born with it or not, and you apparently <laughs> were born with that with that force. Let's talk about something else that gets asked to me a lot: uh, the thought process on how you go about writing tunes. You've been playing the guitar for seven years. Let's, I have. Let, let's talk about when you started writing. Uh, started writing a, a bit before that, and um, I, I wrote, I, I was in college and I decided I wanted to be a singer. And I read this book, it's called Everything You Need to Know About the Music Business. And it's kind of like the musician's Bible. Okay. And it basically taught me that in order to have some longevity in in the business you had to be writing your own material and this was even written back when people were selling records by the millions sure sure so um so i started writing as a functional thing and and it just has become an equal passion to singing and and now playing guitar as well I love it, but I'd love to tell you a little bit about the process since you asked I, I'm curious to know, and so are many of the listeners that check the show out every week um, so please. It totally varies, but I'm going to lead up to the next song we do. All right. <laughs> um, I, I do some writing solo, and then I co-write as well. Um, this next song, a lot of my songs come out of either my own experience or maybe the experience of, of a friend of mine who was telling me some top-secret story that I should never tell the world. <laughs> and I'll take that material and make it into a song and then tell the world. Okay. Um, but this next one uh, started off, someone had a conversation with me and had been through a really nasty divorce and was sort of on the other side of it. And uh, and he actually said, you know, that he had said to his, his ex-wife, thank you, thank you for saying goodbye. And I had a writing session the next day with, with a new co-writer. And, uh, and I said, you know, I got this hook. <laughs> and we wrote this next song. It's called Thank You For Saying Goodbye. And it's on my last record. You good to I go? I see you looking at Delicious. It's, it's not on the Delicious It's either. not on the Delicious okay. CD. All so right. we're going back into the catalog. Very cool. Very cool. You guys ready to do it? Yeah. Once again on the Long Island Blues Warehouse, we are going to keep it moving yeah. with Kirsten Thien. Yeah, time after time I tried to make things right for you Still you left me for someone else you left me with Nothing to lose Got so stuck inside my head I tried to figure out why you did 
did what you did Till I realized it was just time wasted I should be moving on instead Featured artist Kirsten Thien. Nicely done, Kirsten. Thank you. As always. So that song you just played was influenced by the story you told right before we got into it. Yeah. What I now want to know is, let's say you want to write some tunes and you don't have any influential stories in your mind like the one you shared with us starting this tune. Yep. Are you one of those people that can say, like on a Sunday, all right, I'm going to sit down like Wednesday afternoon and write a few tunes, or I'm going to get together <laughs> with with uh, Dave or or, or 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 someone else and write some tunes. Or do you have to be influenced by something that happens to someone or you to start writing a tune? Um, How do you go about? I I personally like the the process of just get sitting down and writing on a regular basis. I can't say I always do it with but nothing special with nothing in your mind to speak special, of. You can do that. Special, sure, yeah. You ever get blocks? Skill. You ever get blocks from time to time? I think if you sit down every day and write, you won't be blocked. Really? Yeah, yeah. That's interesting. Or if you just, um, you know, you're practicing your guitar and uh, there's some new scale you're trying to learn, and then all of a sudden. Okay, you're kind of into that, and then it takes off into a scale, turns into a riff, 
which turns into an idea for a song. What new scale? There's the blue scale and the extended blue scale. Oh, what else is there? And there's all sorts of scales. <laughs> Dave's, Dave's got to be the expert on that. Like there's two but, kinds of music, blues and everything else. Yeah, right. <laughs> there's two scales, I, I was told. That's not true? Nope. <laughs> <laughs> all right, all right. Yeah, so I, I, I really like the You can sit like down and write like literally every day though, huh? I can't say it's going to be good, but I do believe that like if you sit down and write every day, you're, you're honing that skill. And it is a skill. And then um, the other thing is scheduling writing sessions with other writers. So if I'm feeling lazy about my writing, I'll schedule <laughs> a writing session because I won't cancel on someone else. Okay. If I might, I might cancel on myself from time to time, but I won't cancel on 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 a good song co-writer. So. All right, I can yeah. appreciate that. Do you ever um, do you, do you ever uh, go to write a song and? start something and maybe not like the way it's coming out, put it on the shelf for a period of time, come back to it later and, and build Absolutely. on it down the road? Absolutely. How successful yeah. do you find yourself with that type of process? Um, pretty successful. Uh, it's uh, The editing process is definitely the hardest part. You know, when you come up with a great idea and you're really excited about it, you get a verse and a chorus and like half another verse, you're all excited. And then from there on, sometimes it's pulling teeth. But there's a song on the record. Um, we're not going to do it right now, but uh, we'll we'll do it in the second hour. Um, but a song called Ain't That the Truth, and that's one of them where I just had to keep working on that for about two years. And it was, I would say it was 90% done for 18 months of that time. Okay. And there was just one line. When the, when the one line um, came through, I knew it was ready. So it helped that we had the recording session already scheduled. All right. <laughs> so, and then I finally finished the line, and we're still like figuring out how to count it off in the in the studio. But little fine tuning, little out. fine tuning mm -hmm. still needed to get mm -hmm. in there. But you got it done. Yeah. Very yeah. cool. Very cool. It's different for everybody, but I find it fascinating. Yeah. You got some great songs on the new CD. Thanks. Um, all written exclusively by you. Uh, no, we uh, uh, eight of the songs are songs that I wrote uh, or co-wrote. And um, we did a few covers. We did a Willie Dixon song. Oh, you did do a Willie tune in there. Yeah, and we did an Ida Cox song called Wild Women Don't Have the Blues. That's an Ida tune. Yeah, it was written in 1924. No kidding. Can you believe that? With, with, with a little Kirsten theme thrown in there for <laughs> good measure. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Very cool. Probably the first uh, straight ahead blues song that I ever learned to sing. So. Very cool, kid. Very cool. Yeah. Let's keep it moving. Okay. Let's keep it moving. What are we doing next? I, I think we're going to do a little Ida Cox number for you. Oh, sorry, guys. With a little Kirsten yeah. theme thrown in there for, for good measure, as I mentioned. Yeah. You band boys good to go? Yeah. Well, once again, on the Long Island Blues Warehouse, we got to keep it moving with Kirsten Thien. Make them find another home Get full of the liquor Walk the 
This week's featured artist, Kirsten Thien. Kick ass as always, kiddo. Kick ass job as always. Kirsten, let me ask you uh, what the story is behind you and these uh, musicians touring. You guys get on the road? You travel much? Yeah. Let's yeah. talk about some places you've been. Uh, well, we, we have a, a fairly regular trip down to North Carolina and back. Cool. We got some fans down there, some, some fans that are, you know, just the, the entire town comes out to see the Kirsten Thien Band. Very nice. Uh, so we're willing to drive all the way down to North Carolina in the Outer Banks and, uh, and stop everywhere we can in between. Uh, where else have we been, guys? What are some of the towns you've been in that Tennessee. area? Knoxville, Tennessee. Oh, uh, well, uh, we, we hit uh, Williamsburg. Williamsburg, sure. Um, D.C., Sorry, it's all Johnny does all the driving. So, <laughs> DC, Williamsburg, uh, Richmond. He's put on Easton, 80, Maryland. He's put on eighty-eight thousand miles on his own. He, he does with, like with, three with quarters of the driving. Johnny gets bored really quickly, so so we let him drive. It's all a right. perk. It's one of the perks of the job. Very cool. <laughs> you look at that as a perk, huh? I do. All right, glad to hear it. I don't want to be in the back sleeping or staring out the window or something. <laughs> That's Dylan's job. All right. <laughs> Someone's got to do it. Someone's got to do it. Um, what are some? Are you ever been out west? You been I, out there I've yet? done a gig, a solo gig in LA, and, and we're looking forward to getting out west, uh, out maybe in the, the fall. Yeah, in the fall. And there's a, there's a lot going on in Colorado. Maybe hitting some House of Blues around the uh, yeah that'd around be the good. country. That'd be good. Uh, any talks of ever uh, looking to get overseas? Things of that nature. Absolutely. Yeah, that's uh, very, very high on the radar right now. You would uh, do well in England. All we want to do. Is you would do do well in Europe. Yeah. You, were, uh, you, yeah. you did Ireland? I, I, did a, I did a tour of Ireland. Yeah, uh, it was a solo tour. How long ago? Um, 2008, so two and a half years ago. They loved ago. you, didn't they? It was great. You yeah. haven't been back since? Not yet. You're going to work on it, I hope. I am. I'm working on Ireland, uh, the Netherlands, France, Germany, UK. Very cool, yeah. very cool. The CD that's out right now, as we mentioned, Delicious, uh, is CD number what? Number three. What are the, f what are the first two? Uh, first one was called She Really Is. And which came, which one, came out when? Um, 2001. Okay. 2002. Okay. Um, and, then, uh, and then You've Got Me came out in 2006. And, and then we got Delicious now. The infamous Delicious mm -hmm. CD. You working on uh, CD number four any time for the near future? Just from a writing perspective right now. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Nothing scheduled. but. What do you think? Another year or two maybe? I hope so. <laughs> roughly? I hope so. You see how the yeah. wind blows as, That's right. as, as, as things take you through life. That's right. You'll see how the next, uh, what's the, ne the name of the next CD? Uh, the, the next 88,000 mile journey? miles. <laughs> the, the next 88,000 mile journey. Not a bad idea, kiddo. Not a I'd yeah. like to, I tell, I'm world. telling you, there's going to be a song written by you that's going to have that in there somewhere. I, I got to write tomorrow morning, so I'll start, I'll start there. And you, we'll see you, where you, it goes. Wait, wait, wait. You, you got to write tomorrow morning? I have to. Or you yes. want to? Um... Let's, 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 define, let's define that a little well, bit. Well, I have to. Um, I have some sessions, some writing sessions coming up with some other writers, so that I don't want to show up empty -handed. Okay, all right. You're committed to things with other people. Yeah, exactly. All right, you don't want to come to the table empty-handed. That's right. I can't imagine that you ever do, though, do you? I try not to, but th there are times. All right. All <laughs> a right. girl's got to sleep, you know. Rumor has it. Bo beauty rest. Rumor has it. Yeah. Well, whatever you're doing, it's working. <laughs> Thanks. Eating your Wheaties, eating your vegetables, something. Right. Whatever formula you got going on in life right now, <laughs> it ain't broke. Don't fix it. 
Cool. You're on I got a great support system. You got a tremendous support system. You got a great rhythm section. You got a great guitar player over there. You really, how'd you find these guys? Oh my gosh, uh, this is why I love New York. You know, um, we play outside of New York more than we play in New York, but I think New York has the best musicians in the world. Uh, David and I met at a at a at a bar where we were both playing that night and liked each other's stuff and exchanged numbers and and then started playing together. And then Dylan, I was introduced through a mutual friend, and uh, and then we used, I think, Craigslist, and Johnny came down. We had, like, bass players are impossible to find, and, and great bass players are, like, ridiculously impossible to find, so I feel very lucky. Um, Johnny came down, and, you know, and we all got together and said, yeah, we want that one. You're, you're the guy. You're <laughs> and the we guy. didn't even know how much he loved to drive at the time <laughs> or how much fun he is and how much he takes care of us on the road. An, so an, it, added, all, an added surprise yeah. bonus. Yeah. Very yeah. cool. Very cool. Kirsten, we got time probably for three more for hour one. Okay. Then we're going to lock the doors and windows and keep you people in here for hour two audio. Oh my gosh. Those of you checking us out at <laughs> liblues.com. Let's uh, jump into another one. Yeah. What are we going to uh, uh Let's do the title do track for the record. And we'll start with a little uh, bass drum groove here. Here we go. Kirsten Thien, Kirsten Thien. Oh, by the way, 
Kirsten Thien. Nicely done, kiddo. <laughs> Nicely you. done. Love the name. Love the name. Love <laughs> the you. love the sound. And I love what you're all about, kiddo. Wow, thanks a lot. Let's talk about some upcoming shows. Anything to speak Let's of coming that. up in the near future? Absolutely. Uh, we are going to New England. We're going to Maine, uh, which is my home state. It is. Yeah, yeah. When are you heading up there? In June, middle of June. How long are you going to be up there for? Just a couple of dates. Uh, probably uh, the whole band will be there for three days. Dave and I might go a little earlier to do some shows. I forgot to ask you about that, Dave. <laughs> I ho hope you're free. <laughs> Dave, what do you think? You, you good on that? <laughs> That's percolating uh, right yeah. now. So. Yeah, I'm, I'm good. I'm good. I'm fine. Cool. <laughs> Better late than never that you ask him. Yeah. yeah. It, it could have been worse. It could have been in the car on the way up there asking yeah, him. Yeah, exactly. All right. All right. Um, so you're doing Maine in, in, in what, June? In June, yeah. Well, anything else to speak of coming up? And then we head down south for, for our southern swing uh, in the, the middle of July. The, uh, and then we're back out here in Long Island at the end of... August. Where are you going to be? We're going to be at Barbecues. The infamous Barbecues in right. Patchogue, Long Island. In Patchogue. You've been out there yet? Not yet. You like barbecue? I do. Let then why do you think we go to North Carolina all the time? <laughs> <laughs> That's right. Well, when are you going to head out to Kansas City, for God's sakes? Oh, that's, gosh. That's I met some folks from Kansas City. That's the City, barbecue so mecca yeah, of the world. Yeah, yeah. And there's some really cool clubs out there, so. there. There are. There are. But there are more barbecue restaurants in the city limits of Kansas City than anywhere else in the world. Really? For that matter. I but, had no idea. But one of the top places in these parts of the world are the infamous Bobby Q. Named after the owner's uh, daughter, Bobby. Uh-huh. Young Bobby. And uh, this guy went to Memphis for six months to learn the science of barbecue. He'll, he'll smoke like 100 racks wow. of ribs, you know, over like a 12-hour period. Wow. You take a bite of a rib, you got a bare bone in your hand with a piece of barbecue meat hanging from <laughs> your teeth. Really tender, really, he really, he really perfected it. And yeah. you're in for a treat. Can't and, wait. And so is Long Island, for that matter, and anybody from New York City or Jersey or Connecticut that, Connecticut that comes out to that. So very cool. <laughs> Barbecues. Barbecues. What month again? Uh, August. August. I believe it's the 20th, but you can check the website uh, and uh, and... That's it's right on the website. <laughs> okay, very cool. Very it might not cool. be right in my mind until I until I get in the car to go to the gig. But uh, based right on, on the based website. on the attitude and personality, <laughs> I'm going to guess that the answer to the next question is no. But I'm going to ask anyway. How is the comfort level for you walking on stage, especially like in big rooms, maybe festivals or or big big venues, you know, that hold 500 or 1,000 or outdoor festivals of a few thousand people? I know musicians where right before they walk on. Minutes feel like hours. Seconds feel like minutes. Sure. It, it, do you do you get beat up that way with with butterflies and nervousness or get a little get a little excited for sure. You know, you get sort of amped up and and all. You excited. get the adrenaline rush. I get the adrenaline. rush. You don't get rush, the butterflies yeah. to the point where like. It depends. It depends. Um, I I did an opening slot for Buddy Guy in October, and I definitely got some butterflies. Where that. where where was the show? That was in um. In Alexandria, Virginia, at the Birchmere, wonderful, <laughs> wonderful blues venue. Oh yeah, oh yeah, and I got my buddy that guy. That looks like a buddy guy. Strap. He's got and the guitar. It was, looks it was pretty amazing. Um, just kind of looking down because the stage was set up for Buddy. So you know he's got his polka dotted rug on the floor and the polka dotted wah wah pedal. So of course I had to touch the wah wah. Of pedal course, with the polka dotted guitar. <laughs> before I left the stage, I didn't I didn't mess with it or anything. Did you get a chance? Did didn't you get mess a chance? It, I swear. Did you talk with Buddy backstage before? I didn't or after? get to. Uh, he, he I got to hang out with all of his band and uh, the, they're just a, a great bunch of guys. Great was, bunch was of guys. Scott Holt on guitar uh, on the project when you were uh, there? I think it was Bold guy? Rick. Uh, Wasn't a bold guy named Scott, Scott no, Holt? No, it was okay. a guy named uh, Rick. And he and I are friends on Facebook now. The infamous so Facebook. That's how I remember names. You know, It's so much easier to remember names when you get the faces and then you're actually on Facebook. It certainly helps. It yeah. certainly helps. Very cool, kid. Pretty cool. Very cool. We got time for two more. Cool. Let's, let's get into another tune, then we'll do our goodbyes, then you'll play us out for the video. We'll take a little break at that point, and then uh, we're going to do a whole other hour, you people, Great. checking us out through the stream. What are we... Uh, what are we doing next, kiddo? We're going to do uh, a song that I became obsessed with recently. It's a, it's a Freddie King song. Called? It's called I'd Rather Be Blind. <sighs> love it, love it. Yeah. You good to go? We're good to go. I think so. Yeah. Dylan, are we good to go? Good to go. Cool. Long Island Blues Warehouse. We're going to keep it moving with Kirsten Thieme. Oh, 
Yeah, this week's featured artist, Kirsten Thien. We got to thank on the bass right over here to my left, Mr. Johnny Pisano. Thank you so much, Johnny. Back there on the drum kit, we need to thank Mr. Dylan Wissing. Thank you so much. On the other side of the stage on guitar, we've got to thank Dave Patterson. And last, but certainly not least, the lovely and talented Kirsten Thien. Vocals and guitar. Thank you so much, Kirsten. Um, please share with us the website one more time, if you would. Kirstenthien.com. Yes, you can spell it out again. <laughs> K-I-R. You just like the way I spell. I like the way you speak <laughs> and enunciate. <laughs> and so do the audience, by the way. Cool. Get your pens. K-I-R-S-T-E-N-T-H-I-E-N.com. C-O-M. I think we got it. <laughs> well done, kid. Well done. This week's featured artist, Kirsten Thien. You people are going to play us out for hour one, and then you checking us out at uh, liblues.com. We're going to do a whole second hour of audio, so keep it where you got it. Uh, before we get into our last tune for the first hour, Abby, do you have anything you want to add? Please remember to check out EKO Studios at ekoproductions.com. They are the official studio of the Long Island Blues Warehouse. Yeah, way to go, Abby. Good job, kid. An up-and-coming singer-songwriter herself, right. by the way. Lovely Abby from West Babylon. Thank you so much. Hopefully we'll get her on the stage uh, somewhere down the road. So yeah. we want to be on the lookout for that. Abby, thank you so much. Kirsten, what are we going to finish up our one with? We're going to do a song the band and I have been doing for our five-plus years. This song's called Treat Him Like a Man. Here we go. to just clarify a few things because if you hear just a little bit of the lyrics you might think this is a song about stealing your best friend's man but this is not a song about stealing your best friend's man you got to listen to all the words the song is a song about Love, trust, respect between a man and a woman. And I learned this from personal experience. I put it in a song so I would never forget. It goes like this. Oh, wow. So you think your man was property? That's why he went out with me. 